Welcome, everyone, back to the Pommy in Oz show. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. We are live to do a review for you after the Blues' magical two-point semi-final win versus the Demons. I hope you're excited. I've enjoyed watching the re and the replay. Um, for some reason, I felt it was more tense watching the replay. I, I think maybe I'm just obsessed with the uh, the live discourse. But I've got to say, this review was a lot harder um, because I found in finals, I am so ingrained. So if you are new, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe. Good day to you, Toby. Good day to Teddy. Good day to Lockie Jack. Glad you like it. I thought we'd trial it. Um, good day, Chills. How are you doing? Um, Michael, hey, I'm good. How good, how good, Michael, and how good, Adrian. So, obviously, two-point win. So, what can we say? I mean, let's talk a little bit like we usually do in the preordained reviews about what we saw. Um, Danny Hoyne keeps going on about that like, you can only skin a cat one way if you're the Blues. Winning around contested, and you'll see by the stats, we got dominated around contested and we lost around the clearance. And um, 42 points from turnover this week. Do you know what I mean? He says we can't score from turnover. I say Danny Hoyne's full of shit. But the boys are finding a way. And you know what is really impressive when I did the rewatch? Was the maturity levels of this group. The maturity levels in the terms of when the game isn't going their way. Their ability to bounce back and cling back. And... Also, the big thing for me when I watch these boys is through years gone by when things go wrong, genuinely you watch a Carlton team kind of fold under their own layers of pressure. And these boys now are fighting back. You've got a team like Melbourne who have won a flag trying to beat them up and bully them and play a game which screams to me when I see teams fight like that. Do you know what I mean? When they fight like that, that says to me that they don't believe that they can beat us one-on-one. -on -one. And that's kind of what we used to do when we were shit. Do you know what I mean? We used to cling on. They didn't want to play football. They wanted to bully us. And can you imagine being so arrogant and so self-inflated of your self-importance that you've really looked at these boys in the eye and said, we can beat them. We can intimidate them. These boys have lost everything and they have rose to the occasion. And it was great to see. G'day, Bridget. How are you doing? It was great to see. G'day, Kane. I'm very good, mate. Thank you, Dan. All the way from... G'day to you, Teddy. All the way from Kiwi land. Kiora. So let me know, chat, what you thought as we go through this. Doc and Crips were huge. Were huge in this. And we look, 1.46 kick to handball ratio. Exactly what we would expect from the Blues. It was a very vossy game. This one here, I feel like, is the most important stat, though. The pressure and the tackles that the boys bought around will cover individual players as we go into the review. But the onus in to, to be first to the ball, and if you're not first to the ball, you impact the ball. And Vossi said it himself, we're not here to participate, we're here to impact. And boy, oh boy, that is what we've seen. And I think it shouldn't be unscaled how... These boys throughout this journey, particularly over the last 12 games, they've been battered in the press. They've been battered by fan bases. They've been battered by injuries. They've been battered by, they've been battered by suspensions. There's they haven't had it easy. And where this time last year, the narrative was around excuses. The narrative this year has really been owning that moment. And there might have not been great individual performances, throughout the course of the list this week, but everyone took their moment and there was always their moments. The tackles inside 50, about where we've seen all year. This is a huge one though, the rebound 50 rate. Their ability to really take a moment that could be bad, but then counter punch and really retract when they were in trouble. When they were in trouble, their ability to rebound was absolutely sensational, was absolutely sensational. And that there is key case in point. 
A lot of people are going to analyse this game and say, Carlton, we're lucky. Under pressure, what you will find is your weakness statistically in a final comes to light. And their conversion inside 50 has always been abhorrent. Carlton's strength has been defence. And this came to show here. Carlton gave up, again, what we talked about in the preview, the statistical hardest shots at goal. And that rebound 50 rate, not many teams are going to beat you. Not many teams are going to beat you. Um, it's going to be tough, this one against the Lions, and I can't wait to analyse it. But what I want you to think is Brisbane play a free-flowing brand of football. Coward have proved in this, this season that they can play a free brand of football, but when it's tough, they make things happen. And this was really impressive this week, I thought, the Mattis inside 50 rate. 17% being Mattis inside 50 particularly when these boys didn't have their twin pillars or their third in Jack Martin. And think about Jack Martin to come back into this side. I watched the rewatch and I thought if Jack Martin was there, he's got the football craft that Matt Kennedy lacks because he was born as a forward, right? He's born as a forward. And they're going to be big telling moments. We come to the contested possession. And the clearance differential. And this wasn't our strength this week against a side that is very, very good at what we do. Our equals in some departments. And this is where you've got to look at the boys. And what they did is they negated their influence around the centre. And that is a real testament to George Hewitt, to Patrick Cripps, to Walsh, to Chera, to Doc, who was sensational. He dislocated the shoulder. Real testament that even though it didn't go their way against a very strong outfit in the centre, they were more than willing to do the task. And they didn't hemorrhage scores from this position. They really broke even. So even though our bread and butter was taken away from us and size is spot on, high pressure in a row for the boys, this will pay them back. This will pay them back because these are the games traditionally that we used to bemoan last year. The growth in these boys is insane. This is a huge one for me, the conversion, taking the opportunities. And the boys did, right? They, The boys did. They really did take their opportunity in their moment. And there was a real feeling about this game in the last five minutes. And I really noticed it when I was doing the watch along. There was going to be an opportunity and someone had to take it. And the boys did it. Goal generation, 20% being there and TPI. Slightly above where we want. So if you remember, the raw data was saying a five-point win to Melbourne, right? So that basically means if both teams play and where they're expected to, there's a five-point. Look at that. Slight rise to the Blues at the right time. Do you know what I mean? At the right time. Thank you very much, UK. I'd, I'd do the impression. I'd, I'd disrespect that dog. $15. Need to free up Charlie somehow, then watch out Brisbane. And this is going to be interesting what they do next week. Jack Martin will be right. Harry McCarty should be right. Jay Soss, you'd imagine another week into him. So if there is an issue there, they have another toll. But that's going to be a real big thing. Charlie battled hard, though, and I think Charlie was good um, for what he had to do. That's a thankless task against Stephen May, but I agree. If we can free him up, that'll be good. If only Lack Dog was here, spot on. Um, bit of gaffer tape, mate. I mean, this guy survived cancer twice. Do you think a dislocated shoulder is going to pop and worry him, man? Built a stern stuff. Big boys did play a big game. Spot on. Um, thank you very much, mate. Joe, spot on. Charlie will be free next week. Spot on. And that's going to be a huge thing for Carlton's makeup. And selection headaches are pretty good this time of year. We're one game away from a granny. One game away from a big dance. So I suspect that a few of these names we're going to mention now are going to be up and about. And before we come on to Nick Newman, who I really enjoyed his game, I just wanted to give a shout out. If you saw the preview for this, we talked um, to Ollie Hollands in his draft year last year, and we asked him what would happen in a final five minutes to go. And tell you what, he, he's a man of his word, isn't he? He's a man of his word, and it was great to see. But Nick Newman was sensational down the back. We talked about Carlton's counter-pressure, their ability to soak up some damage and go forward. And Nick Newman, again, was a man for the task. And 
Their forward line is very tricky. Chin Cotta did a had to play on Pickett. Pickett at times got the better of him. In the fourth, it really evened up. It really evened up. And Nick Newman was sensational, keeping himself loose, not getting drawn into them contests. He was quite often the mop that held that together. And the 30 touches, the four tackles, as you expect from Nick Newman, he's a real oscillator in what Carlton do down the back, particularly their ability to work hard on the deck against a very dangerous small forward outfit. It has to be said. And Nick Newman's ability to stay free and not draw himself into the contest is impeccable. The 10 defensive half pressure acts, a lot of them desperation as well. A lot of desperation from him. And a big highlight for Nick Newman that doesn't get stated enough is his ability to pounce and make the kick hard. Closing speed. That's something that Chin Cotter and Newman rank quite high in. They're closing distance at pace. And their stats and their GPS data mirror that. This is an insatiable effort. Nine intercept possessions. We talked about Calvin's 42 points from um, transition, from turnover. And a big reason of that is this gentleman here. Insane work rate from the young boy. Um, he's not so young anymore. He's one of the older statesmen, but he's still a baby to me. Three ground ball gets is what you expect from him. Three score launches, again, always high up on this statistic he is. His ability around stoppage, defensive half stoppage, and get them going is always, always strong from him. He's a phenomenal player and a real underrated player. 21 metres gained. A little bit different from him this week. Got them numbers back up again. He was really taking on the hard yakker and he had a hard job. They had a lot of players on him, particularly Neil Bullen went to him late in the second to try and curb his exit. And the defensive disposal efficiency, as usual, in these type of games, slightly down from where we'd see. But again, Solid effort and score five score involvements, six rebound 50s. Take some questions, chat, throw them out. Um, Harry needs, I mean, I think Harry will be primed next week. I think he'll be primed. Um, I think he'll be really expected. Nick did do great. Um, this is something that he's good, right? This is something that he's good at. His defensive craft is insane, but also his ability to give you that counter a punch. It's going to be interesting. The king of the Gabba, Chris, he's coming back. G'day, Jacana. Well, fatigue. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I think at this at this stage of Carlton's development, they're not going to be tired. They're not going to be tired. They're not going to allow it. He is a quiet achiever. Um, at the moment, there is no reports, Don. Um, it sounds like Wheatering had a, a punch to the throat. He was struggling to breathe, winding the same. Uh, I'd imagine Doc's fine. Voss confirmed that. So I'd imagine everyone's going to be good. Too many people just talking about, and Matt, this is spot on, right? It's the pressure. And I keep saying this in the previews. When you look at the stats, in a final, pressure becomes more important. Pressure becomes more important. So that's going to be interesting. I agree, Chris. I, I think it's going to be interesting that if Jack Martin was playing that role, he'll understand a bit better the craft involved. There was times he was a bit behind the ball. But let's have a look at another man who was brilliant. And uh, my namesake, Robbie Williams, created a song about him. Um, it was a beautiful song as well. TDK was everywhere. And this is a real coming from age. I had him for three goals. He got the two, probably at the most important point at the time. One of you asked, do you think we'll send him forward? I do think he will be that break glass in case of emergency player. The 20 run contests, the 40% hit outs run, um, him and Pitonet, who's not featured in today, Pitonet was fantastic at laying a body on him, which allowed TDK to float and be that more exciting player. And the TDK is in the air. De Koenig's in the air. Everywhere I look around. 50% hits out with to advantage against one of the best Rookmen in the world was phenomenal. And this is because of the work that they do. They're a real good tandem. They really are a cracking tandem. And this is an underrated role in TDK, TDK's game. His ground ball gets. Not many Ruckman work hard below their feet. And this is something that TDK does. And it's about having points of difference when you go into these Ruck battles. And he did it. And as Robbie Williams said, he was everywhere, right? 
His ability to work high up the ground and forward and behind the ball, again, exceptional from him. And them high-flying, he's got whatever it is, he's got it. And I've always been confident he's got the talent. It's about getting it out there. And now this guy is flying. And it's amazing how many of these guys we used to talk about. Davey, don't feel bad, mate. A lot of people did. It's amazing how, right, and this is what's more important, I think, about TDK, is the bigger scale of these players that were probably the guys of could be good are in an environment now where they're thriving, right? And the four marks were sensational, relieving marks as well. Two tackles, three clearances, two score launches. Again, a key stat for Ruckman. Can you create something from a stoppage? This is what he did. The four score involvements and the five intercept possession. Shout out to my boy, Sandy, $15 donation. Much love, mate. 12 contested out of 15, mate. Insane hard work. The demon killer, he does believe. I reckon it would be close. I reckon they complement each other, right? So as much as we hate Pitonet doesn't do a lot around the ground, it saves him and makes him be that killer instinct. He's getting better every game. He is, right? And I love it, Jordan, mate. He can handle it. I agree, Carlton Edit. They're massive. They're massive. Jack Martin and old Mackay, they will be huge. And now we come on to probably my favourite from last night, understated row. We know that I am a huge fan of leadership and players that display it. And this was a moment. This was a, These were moments from our captain. And these are the kind of things that when we're long said and done, when we're just a memory, these kind of moments Cripps is having at the moment are the things that will be talked about for generations. So statistically, it was a strong game, right? But Cripper broke his nose. And there was a moment, it felt like a bit like John Wick. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but one of the gangsters kills John Wick's dog and he talks about, you're already dead. Once they broke his nose, game over. This man here, where's the pain? And what is more iconic than seeing Mr. Cripps with the blood on him leading the charge? And his, his work rate and what he does to allow the others to shine is the most selfless, selfless you can be. And that is a leader. That is a leader. That is all you can expect from leadership. 16 contesting possessions, doing the hard stuff. Six tackles, and they were big tackles as well. And they were them brutey tackles. Pulling people off players, leading leading the charge. Two score launches again out of the back of stoppage. Played a lot more offensively this week. And this is really important. Quite often we see Cripper go back when there is a bit of shit going on. He stayed out of the way and he trusted his troops and he led from the front. Four inside 50s, nine clearances. Bit more direct as well from our Cripper this week as well. 12 metres gained, the 17 pressure acts. Effort indicators, 10 ground ball gets. Again, really strong. The seven score involvements. And that is it. Spot on, Brandon. He's a good looking guy and he's strong in the contest. Jakana spot on. He leads and they follow us. You are seeing an evolution from Patrick Cripps now. From the days of the 2019, 30 touches, three goals, Cripps, to the Cripps that leads men. And this Cripps is so much more important. That Brisbane Cripps you saw then wouldn't allow the players to lift around him like he does now. And this is the hardest job in the league. Because his native instinct is to get involved. And we're seeing that maturity from Cripper now to trust. To trust and lead. To trust and lead. And that's the hardest thing. If you've ever been a parent, you love someone so much, the hardest thing sometimes is to stand back and let them do what they've got to do. And again, he did that. Hats off to him. This game won't get enough plaudits. But you look at the great leaders. Spot on, Michael. He was injured as well. You look at the great leaders, your Luke Hodges, your Trent Cotchins, players like that, they stood back and they trusted their men. Coming of age for Crips, and no one deserves this more on the planet than him. And let's talk about him. 
I've had the privilege in my 38 years of watching sport to see some great performances when it counts. Um, names that ring out, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, um, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson. All of these people have something in common, that when it matters, they come to the fore. They come to the fore. They, they own that moment. And this gentleman here, own the fucking moment. This was his stage. And we were just in it. We were just living in his moment. Sam Walsh was as close to perfect as you can see. And Carlton have had finals, haven't they? It's a shame we don't have a commentary fitting of the moment. The fitting of the moment. We've got Judd. This will be fitting. This man here came. He saw. He conquered. MP63, spot on. He, he had so much time. The great players have time and they buy time. He was in another level. 11 contested possessions. And this is an underrated moment of Walsh's game. His hard work. The work that isn't the sexy stuff. He does sexy and ugly at the same time. Eight tackles. Eight tackles insane. The two goals. Probably my favourite moment of my watch along was my voice snapping halfway through when he kicked that first. Rebound 53, his work weight behind the ball insane. Six forward of the ball, three clearances, 18.2 metres gained. That is where genuinely we see the best in that happy place of getting the game for instant. 43 breaks. That, that shouldn't say Fighting pressure is obscene. Obscene numbers to be doing. 43 pressure acts. Nine ground ball gets. You combine sexy football with hard work, right? Let that sink in. You sexy football, but you're also doing the hard yakker. That is hard to do. And the three score involvement, absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. The most complete game I can remember a blue bagger having. And makes me want to be Sam Walsh. <laughs> Thank you, Don. He does revel in these moments. And you know what is really important? That it's not a Sam Walsh game and he brought people along for the ride. He was one important cog in 22 other men doing their job as well. The German Rocky. I love it. He, he, he's a workhorse, mate. It's an emergence of a superstar, and we can go all the way. You know what? I would love to do. I, hey, Michael, if that can happen, Robbie, if you're watching, mate, I would be honoured to do a watch along with you, my brother. We could do a song. We could do it. Let's get on to a man who third round picks. Someone in the chat shouted out Nick Austin and spot on. Nick Austin found this guy for a future third. Can you believe that? And finals are moments, aren't they? Um, and I think in life, you always have a moment, right? No matter how low it's going. And, you know, for me, the big thing is there was a sense of the Melbourne game versus Carlton last year. There was going to be a moment that wins this game, and it's fitting it was this man. This guy has played with a, a busted collarbone. His work rate, the 16 kilometres with one arm for four quarters, is insane. If if they handed out titles for toughness, this guy would be at the top of the team. Top of the tree. Blake Akers, his running power isn't understated. This guy is insane. 17 touches, 317 metres gained, which is quite low for him. But I'll forgive him when he's ran 16 clicks. 18.7 metres gained. His ability to retain possession this week is insane against a team that keeps on coming. Four score involvements, three marks, 21 pressure acts, two goals, and two very important goals as well at opportune times with the 16 kilometers. We know I'm a sucker for a wing. But I'm a sucker for a wing, and this is why you have good wings. This is how you have. He did it with one arm, mate. Can you imagine how good he'll be with two? He might get him for a fourth, mate. He might get him for a fourth, and it is incredible. 
And this is where we are now. You know, we talk about collective energies on my shows a lot. Something I'm a bit involved in. I like a little bit of spirituality. I like a little bit. When you believe, it doesn't matter if your body's not going to follow you. The body will always follow where the mind tells it to. The mental application of this gentleman is in, is, is in another time zone. Another time zone. And you know what, right? This sounds really weird, but I'll tell you a story. In that fourth quarter, when that ball hit him in the goal square, for a moment, I blacked out and it was just me and him on this planet. I know that sounds weird, but I was sat everywhere on the ground and everywhere on the field. And it was just me and him. And for that moment, I felt with him. What a hero, man. I, Richard B. Flat, I feel you, bro. I just want to look this kid's face. What a man. What a man. And what a way. What a way. I want to talk about this guy. We talk about pressure, right? And we talk about thankless tasks. And Lockie Fogarty probably will... I do think it's fair to say that he caught quite a bit of heat in this game um, from the fans, right? Especially on the watch along, right? He did cop quite a bit. But this guy's pressure around the ball should not be understated. It's a metronome effect. And there's a lot of players that I see in him that won flags for their respective clubs that probably don't get the love. And I always think of Jamie Cripps, right? I think of Jamie Cripps when West Coast beat Collingwood, right? He didn't kick a lot of goals, but one thing he did is he always brought brought the pressure. He made it hard for you to get good ball out of the back line. And this guy, will ch he's like a greyhound. He just chases shit, chasing shadows, right? And you know what I feel? I feel if anyone ever mugs me, I want Lockie Fucky next to me chasing the prick with my wallet. Because this guy's bringing it, isn't he? This guy here... Tell you what, he, he he should be a cop when he retires. No one's getting away. Hey, Richard B. Flat is spot on. And he, he retains the pressure, but it's that, it, it's that mindset that he lets them know they're in for a shit day. Only two on the planet. Irene, honestly, I had a moment with Akers. And the no inside 50s, which is probably where it comes from because people are expecting it, but the pressure... I think is so much more important. 14 pressure acts, four tackles, three ground ball gets, one forward 50 ground ball get, seven score involvements. So he was involved in just about everything Cowton did. Him, Cripper and Walsh are three guys that were nearly involved in every Cowton passage of play that resulted in a score. When you combine the fact that you're being a tit as well, and bear in mind, they had a player at the other end doing the same job, pick it. And everyone hates him. No one will hate Fogarty. Difference between being tough and fair and tough and being a complete melt, right? It's a hard line. Workhorse, Aiden, spot on. Right, Hunter, spot on. And these pressure players are so important and they'll never get the love. They'll never get the love. Poppy, spot on. He is Paul Popolo. And that is it. And it will trouble, spot on, Michael. Our pressure, if that game is like that, I saw a few pundits talk about Brisbane watching this game and licking their lips. Brisbane don't play this style. If this game goes like this against Brisbane, Brisbane are fucked. And 50% chance creation. So what that means is half the time he had the ball, something happened. Cowton had a score. That's insane. That's insane. Like, you're talking, he would be in the best 10. And we finish with a man that, even if you take oxygen away from him, he still kills you. Jacob Wheatering, Sam Doherty, I would say are probably the most loved players at the football club for what they bring. And Jacob Wheatering is on another time zone of good. Jacob Wheatering. I am so proud of him because he looked dead on his feet when he had that knock and his ability to rise and continually win one-on-ones, 100% -on ratio one-on-ones. Now, you know, there's a guy in America 
called Donald Trump wanting to build a wall. Let's hope he never gets access to the DNA of Jacob Wietering because you can't even get a visa to get into America if they make a wall out of Jacob Wietering. Jesus H. I have never seen... I've heard J Sauce was the was 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 the master, the best fullback of the century. My brain can't rationalize Sauce being better than this guy, right? Because he must have been scary good. Do you know what I mean? Watching him, I'm just thinking, how good was Sauce? Because I have never seen anything like it. Like, it is insane. The one-handed grabs under pressure. Going 100% one-on-one in a final is mental. I, I wish I could go back, chat, to see Sauce. Because that must have been insane. Because I can't believe what I see. It is It was insane. Three contested marks. But this is the big thing with Wheatering. And I don't think he gets enough press, gets enough press for this. Not only does he do these contested marks and these one-on-one -on -one moments, but he's also so good offensively. And look at the meters gained. His ability to turn a shit situation, to turn the ball, get the ball back, and then bang it 30 meters from goal to a target. Insane. Look at that. 23.5 meters gained per touch for 80%. And you know what else he's got? It's not just his defensive work. That last passage of play, he had a player open on the left in Adam Saad, and he chose the Holland option. His playmaking is another level as well. In my humble opinion, there isn't a defender in the league as good as this man. Like, it's him. Then we'll have a conversation about second. Do you know what I mean? It's it's that clear to me. It's that clear to me. It's we are in silence, gaps, then the next block. This guy is insane. Insane. Eight marks, 100% one-on-one, -on -one, 10 intercept possessions, six spoils, 80% efficiency. And another understated part of this gentleman's game, three ground ball gets. That's insane. Like, working hard on the deck when you're a big unit and four score involvements. The most complete game I've seen by a defender. Insane. You know what? I need to see some full games. If you can find some good games um, of Sauce, I'd love to watch him. I know the game was a bit different then, but insane. It, fuck. Huge praise. He, he's, another, he's another level. He's, he's another level and phenomenal, phenomenal. But all in all, you know what really scares me is think back, chat, to 15 weeks ago, right? We were 15th. There is, I'm, I'm a firm believer that every decision that happens opens up another alternate universe, if you will. There is a world that exists where Carlton didn't get better. And Voss is probably not there. Players are probably traded. There's sackings everywhere, right? But instead, the reality we live in, something turned. And these boys, from being bottom four in the league and now one of the four best teams in the country. And we, we were part of that. We were part of that. And let that sink in. Like... And that is a big, I think that's a big simile, a big simile for the world, right? No matter how bad or dark you think a moment in time it is, all it is is a moment in time. And all it takes is belief. Belief it can change. I remember doing the review of the Essendon game and I got PMs from people, give up, Pom, counting as shit. All this stuff. Don't know why you have faith. Go and watch a different sport. Right? Think about that. That was only 12, 13 weeks ago. So next time you're feeling sad and down, feeling life is tough, and there's always going to be moments, take a leaf out of the blues book. 
that it's just a moment in time. One moment in time. And in three months' time, you could be at the top of the world. We have the biggest game for a long, long time between us, right? And they're going to need us. They're going to need us. And the noise you made in the chat, the noise you made in the chat, the noise you made at the ground, the noise you're making here, these are so important. Go back and watch that interview with Ollie Hollands and his eyes lit up and he told us what he was going to do when the game was on the line and he executed. I want no talk this week of no one can beat Brisbane in the Gabba. No one can, we can't beat Brisbane. None of that chat. These boys can do anything they want when they've got the weight and the power of its fan base with them and their belief. Look at how much it meant to them after the game. People crying, hugging their dads, hugging their mums, hugging their wives. That's what's life about. That life is about their moments. Their moments in time. That when we're old and grey, all they are is just an emotion. And I am so proud of everyone at that club, everyone in the boardroom, everyone behind the scenes, and more importantly, everyone on that field and everyone in that fan base. Because they have belief. And all it takes to achieve anything in the world is a wee bit of belief. And you watch it go, uh, you watch it turn. You watch it turn. We were broken, but now we are repaired. And when something breaks and you rejoin it together with a little bit of TLC and a bit of love. I remember asking my nana how she was married to my pop for 60 years before she died. And I used to say, how the fuck do you pot up with him? And she said to me, son, when I was your age, my generation used to repair things that were worth keeping. And the cracks and the scars that remain from it are just part of the wonderful tale and the wonderful journey and the reminder that something is worth keeping. This is it. Wear your scars with pride, chat. So proud. I'm so proud. And we go again. And you can't fight destiny. You can't fight fate. And now it is becoming to be destiny. They get injured. They get suspended. They get dropped. And they come back again. You have to kill us to stop us. Not many people are willing to do that. Chat, I love you all to pieces. Spend some time with your friends. Spend some time with your family. Spend some time with your friends. Much love, everyone. We are going all the way, chat. Two more wins. Two more wins. Much love. Be safe. I love you all. Come on, Bruce. Bring it on!